Hi guys, this is Jarrah at Spire and welcome to another tutorial. Now just before I start quickly, I want to tell you that I have rejoined Fume. Um, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know I was in Fume a couple of months ago, probably back in June, uh, yeah around, no, even longer ago than that, maybe the beginning of the year. Um, but I have rejoined Fume and I'm really looking forward to some of the stuff I'm going to do for them. So yeah, now you've got that out of the way, let's get on with this tutorial. Now the effect we're going to be creating is this, I'll find it, there we go, oh, these invert flashes in my edit arts by 0.4. Now this was on my channel a while ago, um, if you want me to re-upload this edit I will, but I'll just play it through here to show you the effect we're going to be creating. It is literally just this inverse flashes and none of the other effects because there's quite a lot of effects in this. So yeah, I'll just show you this guys quickly. So yeah, it's literally just the inverse flashes. You can find them on there. There is one. Um, now here it does look a bit different. Oh, if my effects wants to load, it's quite a lot of effects on this. So it takes a while. Um, you do see some kind of alliteration, alliteration, jitteration of the um, edges here. Now we're not really doing this because this has lots of other effects on it. So if I just show you quickly, um, you see all the effects and keyframes and stuff. If I just solo the in Turn off all the other effects on this just so you can see that it is actually completely different. That's how it looks normally. Um, uh, but then, when you try the effects, so even just with the color correction on, it adds that really nice difference, and you can really do a lot with this. Um, so, I'm going to show you how to do this, and then maybe some um, extra things you can do to make it look nicer. So, yeah, let's just get started here. Um, I'm going to make a new composition and call this just quick tutorial for now. And I'm going to drag in my song and I'm just going to find where the beats are. Uh, I don't know where the beats are because I have my sound turned down. So I'm going to go with somewhere like there. So I'll hit 1 with the key, uh, shift 1, shift 2, and shift 3. Okay, there we go. Um, drag in the clip. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to zoom in, we're going to go to where 1 is, so hit 1 on keyboard, go back to that first marker. We want to add an adjustment layer, so click layer, new adjustment layer. And I want to make sure that he's not scoped in at this point. Oh, maybe the wrong thing. Because I don't want the invert thing to be scoped in. Okay, so now we've got the adjustment layer, what we want to do, I'm just going to call this invert magnify, because that's the effects we're using it. So the first thing I want to do is go to Effect, Distort, Magnify. You want to bring the magnification oh, up to about 200, like that. Size up so it fills the entire screen. And you can kind of drag this around so it magnifies different areas. I'm just going to kind of drag it off to the right a little bit, left, sorry. So it's magnified the entire screen, basically. Then what we want to do is go to the Pen tool, and we want to uh, select the area we want to do the effect on. So let's just go across the straight across the screen here. We go up a bit further here, and then like this, and like that. So now we have this. It looks a bit funny so far, but it, looks, it kind of looks cool in a way. Um, so we've now masked this. Next thing to do is go to Effect uh, Channel, and then Invert. And there we go, we've done this. Now, you can just leave it like this if you want, but some, there's some things you can do. If it change its saturation, it changes different things under invert, hue does different things. Each one does a different thing, so you can change it to kind of do some different effects. But let's keep on RGB for now because we're going to change some settings. So next thing you want to do is go to effect, oh, make sure you've got the um, layer selected. Go to effect, I believe it's under color correction, I can't remember the name of the effect. Uh, what's it called? Black and white. There, nah, I knew that. Color correction, it's under channel, isn't it? I can't remember what black and white is. There it is. I'm stupid. Now it does this. Now what you can do, you can drag it above the invert. Just it changes it a little bit. So if you look around the capture area here, when it's above it, it looks like that. If I drag it beneath it, it kind of adds a bit more blacks when it's beneath it. Um, and again, you can change things around. You can tint it. So if you hit the tint keyframe here, you can have it a certain color. You can do that. So it's all orangey red, 
purple, pink, blue, green. You can do all the different stuff, but you can just untick tint and it won't do that. So there we've got the basic um, thing. So what we can do is we can go to hit T and we want to hit the opacity of the keyframe. And then I go, go back maybe two frames, one, two, and set the opacity down to zero. Go forward a couple frames and then you go forward maybe ten frames. Uh, that was five frames. No, that, yeah, that was five frames. Bring that down to zero. So now if we just listen to this. It flashes, which is pretty cool. Um, and then again, just copy these keyframes. So go to then two back back two frames, paste. Go to three back two frames, paste again. And what you have here is then it flashing on the beat. Then it does it each time. The only problem we have now is that the mask is exactly the same for each one. So to change that, you can actually animate the, the there animate the mask. So if you go to M on the magnify, hit the keyframe uh, stopwatch next to the mask path on 1. When it's completely faded out, hit the, the little diamond button to have another keyframe. Then just go forward to like just where it flashes again. And then move the mask to the new, the new area you want. So maybe something like this. Maybe something like that. Or you can even do that, so it's a weird, old, weird shape. And go forward, so it's now flashing there, and then it's flashing here. So you can see the mark actually moving, ready to flash in the next area. So it flashes there now. Then again, go forward to where it finishes here. Add another keyframe. Go just before. And let's zoom out so I can see the different areas. You can, you can even move it completely around if you want to. You can do look, You can do so much things. I don't even need to have it going completely down on one side. Do something like that, maybe overlap them. So now it flashes, it does it in that area, which looks pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's how you change the different um, uh, flashes just having, by having one layer. Okay, so next up, um, you've just got the basic flashing now, and you can, if we just copy a color correction from here, paste this on, and then unhide. Wait, which one is it above it? Yeah, that's right. You can see now it's pretty good with the color correction, it's got the flashes and it looks really cool. Now the next thing you can do is add some glow. So if we go to um, layer, new adjustment layer, I'm just going to turn these color corrections off. Go to effect, stylize, glue. Glow will really help the, um, the whites. It basically makes the brighter colors glow so that on the invert layer it will really work. So if we then just leave that like that. Maybe bring the radius down to seven, and then go to put the CC back on. You can see now it looks really good. It's really starting to give that glow effect. And then that's kind of pretty much it, guys. You can then just go and add in different effects above this. So on one of them, I had turbulent displace as well. So on each shot, the it goes displaced, and then when it flashes, you can see that the mask isn't like. Um, I see the red is the mask here, the red line's the mask, but um, it's not following it because the turbulent displace is actually distorting it. Um, then I added, added a flip on so it's inverted it on some areas. So when you, sh I think, or maybe there you see it's inverted here. Um, so you've got that, you add the glow back on. Oh, I think it's going to work. I think I did add the glow on, didn't I? Oh, wait, no, I don't have this effect. Uh, objects compensation you can add in so when he shoots it zooms in like that which looks pretty cool and then you can add that above this as well twitch is a really big one um, it doesn't really work very well on my computer at the moment so that's not working but it if you had twitch it really looks good when you um, put the RGB split up on this um, on the actual like edge of the uh, what's it called invert uh, shine is another good one um, that will add a bit of difference to it. It adds it kind of some blueing, bluish tints. Vector blur again is a good one on the flashes. Um, let's try and find another one where it's. So here it looks really cool because the in the um, the flip layer is above the magnify layer. It's this way at one second, and the next bit further on, it's the other way, and so on. So yeah, it's a pretty cool effect. You can do loads of it, and I've seen it used quite a lot. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like. Um, it was really great to get like I think 18 likes straight away on my first tutorial after a little break. So let's see if we can break that 20 likes mark, guys. Leave a comment, and I shall see you guys later.